Good morning, everybody. This is Eureka John with Eureka Street Crypto Hub, broadcasting live at 7.19 in the morning on September 15th, a Wednesday, 2021. And yes, this is my video blog, my morning show, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, me basically getting on here and talking about crypto once a day, every day, and I've been doing this since October 24th, 2020, and this has been a really fun experience for me. I enjoyed it tons. This is my way to kind of um, articulate what I'm learning in the crypto space on a day-to-day -day basis, and it keeps me disciplined to continuously always learn something new in crypto because crypto is an ever-changing space, and there's never, ever, ever a shortage of things to talk about in this space. So every single day I'm given a new subject either by my own choosing or by uh, people messaging me and say hey what's up can you take a look at this or that and uh, you know now the more i've been doing this and i'm going on a year now uh, first i you know it was crickets you know and then now every single day i'm getting something new pop in my inbox and um yeah i'm just like wow man, i didn't know this existed and uh yeah so <laughs> and, and i guess it can be seen a uh, from the content, um, I've been doing interviews with a bunch of a uh, uh, very different people and projects and stuff like that, and that's been entertaining as well, to say the least. Um, but uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's what it is. And uh, yeah, I'm not your teacher, and this is not financial advice. This is just me exploring things in crypto. So you know, that's don't take what I say and be like, oh, I gotta go run out and invest in that. No, no, <laughs> just. Do your own research. And, and, and I don't want to be that guy either. That's like, if you have questions, be like, do your own research. You know, I've been treated like that and that sucks, you know. So, I mean, I will try to help you out as much as I can if you have questions. But, I mean, if you're going to be putting your money into something, uh, <laughs> don't don't put all your marbles in what I say. That's for sure. Uh, all right. But aside from that, um, let's take a quick look at the crypto market and see what's going on here today. Uh, we have Bitcoin 47,697 up a thousand from yesterday, um, up 3.6% in 24 hours. Ethereum 343391 going back up. It you know it got down to 3200 I think, which is I mean if you think about it, this time last year for Bitcoin and Ethereum to be like, well it's a little down right now at 47,000 and 3400. I mean that's <laughs> I mean come on man. I mean serious. If I I I was investing in Bitcoin and Ethereum at this time last year. So there's no possible way any of this could be a loss for me. I'm a dollar cost averager, and which means I put in a little bit every single chance I get. Um, I, I try to keep it on a routine like every paycheck and I get paid bi-weekly. So you know, I try to put in a little bit um, every two weeks at least. Um, so no matter what the market looks like at the time, I'm not sitting there, you know, eyeballing you know the the crypto markets be like well it's not a good entry point i know no matter what it is i'm i'm putting it in you know and a dollar costs averages out as it's in its continual upward trajectory that this entire market has been going on um in the past few years so i i believe in web 3.0 i believe in blockchain 3.0 i'm not here to sit around and talk about price it's not what i do um, I, I'm not sitting here saying, well, you know, I'm looking at the fundamentals and this project looks like it could be good on a nice time horizon. And, you know, we're looking for this and that curve. No, I, I'm just, if I see something, uh, in a project that I'm like, okay, this is creating cool developments and I like what it's doing and I, uh, I want to invest in its future. That's basically what I do. And it's not like I'm rich or anything. I don't have a lot of money to invest, but um, every little bit counts, you know, good morning, Randy. And, uh, you know, this past year I've been getting some people jumping on as, as, uh, regular watchers. I feel like I'm kind of, I'm just having my morning. I mean, I don't drink coffee, but my you know morning, uh, um, smoothie or this one here is a sports drink or kombucha. Ah, I already finished my kombucha this morning. So, all right. Um, anyway, back to the, 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 the numbers. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't really look at price that much, but I do kind of like looking at daily um, the pricing, prices and seeing patterns overall. Um, it's kind of like a horse race to me or you know, looking at back of baseball card stats and stuff like that. Cardano is at 241. Tether's a stable coin, so it's a dollar. 
Um, if it weren't at a dollar, I'd be worried. Um, Binance Coin, 428.21, XRP, $1.09. Solana, $159. Yesterday, Solana and Arbitrum were both down for a little while. And, uh, you know, I know some other um, blockchain tribes were smugly talking about them yesterday, but, uh, you know, it happens. You know, Ethereum back in 2017 had an issue and it went from $300 to $1,500 almost overnight. So, you know, don't sit there and say that. I mean, this actually could be a really great jumping in point for Solana if you think about it. But, uh, you know, I, I think Solana is a good project. And, um, yeah, I don't think that there's any such thing as an Ethereum killer, you know, um, it's just. I think they're all going to work together in their own certain ways. Um, and that includes Cardano, too. So, you know, I know the Cardano and ETH people, don't, they stay tend to butt heads, you know, but uh, whatever. All right. So let's see here. Uh, Polkadot 3643, the Doge, uh, 24 cents. USDC stablecoin, Terra 3642, Chainlink 3129, making waves. And uh, Uniswap 2551. Binance USD, Stablecoin, Litecoin, 182.69, Bitcoin Cash, 641.46. I have no idea how it's number 16. Um, Avalanche, 52.82. Algorand, $2.04. And the ICP coin, 58.79. Uh, the Cosmos, 33.65, up 60.1% in the past seven days. So Cosmos is doing something good. Uh, Filecoin, 86.57. Polygon Matic, $1.36. All right, so um, let's see. And uh, let me do my... All right. So, all right. So one thing that I did w want to look at was, um, this is what I'm going to talk about. Um, somebody alerted me of the existence of this project and, uh, it was actually good timing insurance. And, um, what this is, is basically DeFi insurance and it's a growing industry in the crypto world. And I know Nexus Mutual has been kind of the pioneer of it. Uh, there's Augur. I, I think it's, it covers like futures and stuff like that, which I'm not really, that's all Greek to me. And then uh, there's Open, the, where the E in there, OP uh, is a V, OPVN. And I believe that deals with derivatives and stuff like that. Again, tough to get my head wrapped around. But um, this insurance.io, it's, it's, it, it seems very clear and cut. Uh, straightforward. Nexus Mutual is pretty straightforward too. I've, I've heard interviews uh, about Nexus Mutual on um, Bankless and on the Masari podcasts. Um, but um, yeah, this insurance, when I looked at it, because last weekend I interviewed um, EZ. He's one of the founders of Rug Zombie. And Rug Zombie is based on the Binance Smart Chain. And if you didn't listen to the interview, what Rug Zombie does, it takes these dead projects and if you if you got rug pulled in a project, then um, you get to take your dead tokens and lock them up on Rug Zombie, and then um, uh, generate an NFT from that. And they use these NF they they create these NFTs from these these really amazing artists. So at least you can recover some value from from uh, those dead coins that you got rug pulled on as a bag holder. And I, I think that is a really cool creative concept. And uh, the artists of, of these NFTs were really cool. And they're starting to commission out some really well-known NFT artists. And if you haven't been involved in the NFT world, you know that some of these artists and these NFTs are really worth some money. So if you can take some of your dead coins from being rug pulled on something on Binance Smart Chain and then um, put it in one of their graves and then have it generate these NFTs that actually have value, then you've recovered some value. And then not only recovered in some cases, you've grown value from your initial investment out of these rug pulls. So I think that's a pretty cool concept, but that brought to mind, um, how do you prevent from being rug pulled in the first place? I mean, the DeFi space, you know, I don't want to give any credit to Elizabeth Warren talking about shadowy super coders because I believe, and she said, who would you rather you know, um, uh, invest your money in with shadowy super, co shadowy super coders or the big banks? And I'm like, no way, not the big banks, that's for sure. I much prefer shadowy super coders because I know all the crypto community holds each other accountable. You know, if, if somebody gets a bad reputation in the crypto community, everything is still small enough and there's crypto Twitter and if word gets around, if somebody is being a little butt cake, you know that uh, <laughs> everybody's going to know about it. You know, if there's a rug pull, everybody's going to know about it. You know, and uh, it, it, 
it's not as easy to hide in the crypto space as you would think. Um, people track wallets. People, uh, it's it's hard to get. I mean, you can start any type of avatar or uh, an on name and all that stuff, but it is harder than you think to start getting followers and stuff like that because people go to the names that they know and that they know are trustworthy and reliable. Yeah. So uh, that being said, I would trust the shadowy super coders more. However, there's still risk in the space and there's lots of risk in DeFi at this point. Um, when you think about the amount of money in DeFi, it is minuscule to the total amount. Okay, first of all, uh, think about all the money in the world, all right? And then the amount of people that invest in crypto are just a tiny fraction of all that money in the world. And that's a crypto meaning Bitcoin, you know, and then Ethereum's even less than that. And then think about the people that are actually using crypto in a DeFi sort of way. And that's even a tiny fraction of the people in crypto. And then think about the people that actually use DeFi on layer two within DeFi. <laughs> you know, and that's an even tinier fraction. And so uh, with each of these tiny little fractions getting smaller and smaller, the risk gets higher and higher. Um, but there's still... A large total value locked and a lot of money to be lost and i don't make a lot of money from my eight to five job but i dollar cost average so what i put in really matters to me and i want to hold on to it and that's where i was kind of like in light of this rug zombie interview and in light of all this perceived risk and i just kind of got soft rug pulled uh, the other day i mean it was kind of my fault because i didn't really understand a protocol that well but then the guy started cussing at me calling me a noob and dyor and i was just being treated terribly so um i guess i could have maybe gotten uh him to do a manual contract but just by me being like hey man uh i, I i'm not really sure what's going on and he just started you know yelling at me so i was just like all right whatever i'm not I, I don't i don't get into confrontation online period at all and um so i just took the loss and backed out of there and just like eliminated that conversation <laughs> like and just say you know what you live and learn and you crash and burn but um it just goes to show that there's a lot of risk in the DeFi space and especially when you start getting towards janky projects not saying that insurance will uh, insurance.io will will insure you on some kind of janky project on binance smart chain or or uh, polygon or maybe they will but um uh, that's to be determined. And so right now, Insurace is sitting at 220. Um, it is a fairly new project. Um, but uh, let's see here. Let's go in and all right. So uh, let's go to their website and see what's up. Okay, insurace.io. All right, if you hear the cat meow and it's trying to pound at the door because it wants in, you know, but then when I try to pet it, it sits there and tries to bite me. So I'm just like, get out of your cat. All right, so insurance protocol, ensure your DeFi journey. 60 plus protocols protected by insurance in total. All right, so you can be listed on here. And of course, the referrer, it earned, they have their token, they get insured. All this is built on Ethereum uh, launch app and read docs. So I scoured through the white paper because I love me a good white paper and uh, just to kind of see what it's about. Um, I was listening to some podcasts on Nexus Mutual and I was just trying to compare it. Um, Nexus Mutual, um, I mean, as of last May, they were only covering Solidity contracts. And uh, Solidity is the language that Ethereum is written in. And uh, that's it. Um, so this seems to be a little more comprehensive and it, uh, Nexus Mutual requires KYC, which means know your customer and you have to go through that whole process where you, you know, have to um, uh, hold up your license and then hold the piece of paper saying, yes, this is me, you know, maybe some utility bill that proves your address or whatever. And it's a real pain in the butt and sometimes it can take a couple days to a week to sit there and be approved. And you're just giving away your information, which kind of goes, it's kind of antithetical to the whole DeFi thing. Um, if you have to do KYC on de decentralized finance, you know, uh, but there's KYC. Yeah, um, this it's the whole thing. And I, I know the SEC right now, I talked about it yesterday, is, is really starting to crack down. And they say, this is the only beginning. We're not going to pull any punches. There's going to be no warning shots, you know, all that stuff. Gary Gensler making all these 
you know, r remarks about in that fashion. But anyway, let's take a look in here. First of all, let's just go quickly to the app just so I can take a quick look at this here. All right, so um, here's, let's go to the dashboard. Um, I don't have anything on here yet. Um, so my cover, I mean, this is pretty straightforward dashboard for a website. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to navigate around. Um, it's well designed, I think. Um, my claims, my mining, my rewards. Um, so your coverage. All right. So let's see here. Buy covers. All right. I was going to get a look at that. And um, uh, let's see. So you can get covered in UMA. So I guess you can pick your individual um, protocols that you want to jump into and get covered on. And as you can see, there's quite a bit so far. Um, UMA, Dodo, Alpaca Finance, um, Hedgic, Badger, Impossible. I don't, I mean, some of these I don't even know, I mean, but I, I, Harvest got hacked last year. Um, you know, I, I know Dodo and UMA and Badger. Um, I've heard of Alpaca, uh, Perpetual, um, Alchemix. I have stuff in Alchemix. Um, Alchemix had an issue and um, a lot of people were very honest on Alchemix and they gave back money, but apparently there was some kind of exploit where it immediately rewarded everybody the total amount um, that they were going to be rewarded. <laughs> I, I, I don't know uh, the details of it, but it was pretty, it was pretty entertaining, honestly, seeing all the chat about it. And uh, I think most of the people that got um, their reward in full at the forefront um, gave the money back to the protocol. I mean, see, it just goes to show shadowy super coders uh, in this world uh, will generally tend to be honest, you know, and, and uh, I guess that's the point of optimism. And um, so uh, Balancer, Kyber Network, Mushrooms. Um, so uh, Mirror Finance. Um, yeah, so I wonder if, if um, from a protocol level, um, so I guess you can get insurance as somebody who is running a protocol and then insurance as somebody who's using a protocol. So it might be good too to look at a protocol before you use it and say, does this protocol have insurance? Uh, it might be a selling point for a protocol. So that could be something to look for. And um, I don't know, maybe <laughs> Alchemix partnered and bought this. I, I See, I, I think it'd be cool to have an interview with these guys and have them answer some of these questions that I'm having as I go along here. But, uh, you know, that's not the point of this right now. I'm just taking a look and seeing what's up. As you guys know, I take a look at various projects every day, and sometimes it might even be my first look at the project. I mean, I did look at it a little bit yesterday and this morning um, b before this. But, uh, yeah, uh, this is this is pretty cool. Um, Anchor Finance, I talked about this yesterday or the day before, I believe. And uh, they have some really good interest rates right now in APRs, APYs. And uh, the percentages are looking good. It's on the Terra uh, blockchain. So as you can see here, there's Polygon, Ethereum, Terra, um, uh, Binance Smart Chain. And I saw somewhere in there, there's Huobi Chain. Um, yeah, I saw in there Solana is, is um, going to be a part of it as well. Um, so w in light of that whole Solana being down yesterday, um, that... Uh, this could be a case for it, you know? Um, so let's see here. Uh, Harvest Finance, I already went through that. Yeah, Anchor, Sushi Swap. And then Ave is on Polygon right here. And the daily cost is 0.0068%. And then down here, you have Ave on Ethereum. So you can get insured on both the Ethereum blockchain and the Polygon blockchain. I honestly am, um, even though I have stuff staked on Bancor, which is right here, I have a, a lot of stuff staked on Bancor, so it might be beneficial if I were to get some insurance on all my stuff staked on Bancor. Um, yeah, and I, I'm, I definitely like Bancor a lot, and um, yeah, probably smart, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can, I've can. i been doing a lot of stuff besides Alchemix and Bancor and Aave. Um, I've been doing most of my stuff on, on uh, the Polygon network, using the Matic network, and because it's cheaper. And so a lot of more my more um, quick, high risk, my playing around, my testing of stuff and stuff like that is being done on the Polygon chain. So uh, that being said, I went in here into the app. Let's go back to the dashboard. And um, I'm gonna go to my mining. And let's say here, and it gives me a place to stake. I mean, look at these APYs, 143.92%, DAI is 
Um, USDC is 63.55%, USDT, Tether 71.56%, Wrapped Ethereum 59.72, and then the Insure token 57.51. And um, whatever you stake, you, you get Insure as a reward. And you can come at this, for, according to their white paper, you can come at it and you can be an investor or an insurer, or you can be the insuree, the customer. And that's kind of how the... I don't in their dashboard quite see how you can differentiate being an investor and an, an insurer. Uh, that would be again something cool to clarify with them and talk with them in an interview so I can uh, figure that out. Um, but let me just go ahead and I'll just go ahead and just stake some Matic here just to test it out and see what's up. All right, so stake. Um, you can stake assets and assets at any time. Uh, what did I see? A 15 day, okay, unstake lock period. So it's got to be locked. Okay, 15 days, fine. Um, yeah, who knows? Maybe I want to keep it longer. So I'll just do 100 Matic for now and see what's up. Um, all right, make sure you understand the risks involved in staking. You can unstake an asset at any time, but the unstaked amount will be fully withdraw after a lockup period. Okay, so I guess I could take it out any time, um, but to get the full amount, then I have to wait the 15 days. Fine. Okay, so I'll confirm this, and it will connect with my MetaMask wallet, which you can't quite see right now on your, your window, but it has popped up. And that's the beauty thing, the beauty about the Matic network is it's super cheap and it's super fast. Um, all this stuff on Ethereum would take long and it would cost me a freaking arm and a leg. And I'm just a pleb, you know, I'm just a proletariat, you know, just a common man. And uh, yeah, so that would take me a long, uh, it would take a lot of my paycheck to do that on Ethereum. But uh, not so with Matic, and which is what Matic is great for for things like this, where I just want to try out some protocol and see what's up with it, um, and then maybe later, once I, uh, things have been successful, I'll probably dump more money in it <laughs> yeah. uh, because I like stuff like this, and, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I found some other layer two Polygon protocols that I like too, like Adamant Finance that I'm that I'm sticking with for a while, and uh, yeah, a couple others, but. Um, I mean, 143.92% APY. I mean, that's that's really good. You know? So um, that went through, and then we'll, we'll come back to that here in a second. All right, so it probably takes a little bit to clear. All right, so let's go take a look over here um, at the, let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I wanted to show this right here, if this will pull up. Uh, Insurious introduction. And um, come on now, come on people now. And this is probably, all right, so, uh, uh, okay. So here's their, their little introduction. Uh, insurance, the next big opportunity, total value locked in DeFi. Um, okay, so just kind of gives you the stats of what's going on. Um, product accessibility. High premium, um, KYC and membership required. So this is kind of what's going on in the current DeFi and crypto insurance industry. And uh, um, some of the issues, they're high premiums, especially on Nexus Mutual, uh, the competitor. It's not even really a competitor. They're, they're trying to work together. I, I see Insurace.io uh, insurance is kind of trying to... Um, Fill in some of the parts that uh, Nexus Mutual is not really able to cover and do. Um, I mean, Nexus Mutual being the first mover you know, is taking a large percentage of this, but there's some ways in which insurance.io can weave in and out and cover some of the things that maybe Nexus Mutual is not able to cover. But uh, right now, Nexus Mutual, it's, it, KYC and membership is required, not so with insurance.io. Limited capability, capacity lack of coverage for new DeFi protocols and more risk types. As you saw in there, I mean, like Harvest Finance and some of these others in there, uh, I'm just like, wow, you're actually covering that? Okay. Um, uh, I mean, Harvest Finance is good. I'm not dogging on Har Harvest Finance, uh, but uh, it did get hacked last year. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, no cross-chain deployment, um, capital efficiency, low investment return for participants, uh, low reserve utilization, and then uh, underlying risk, Claim assessment, security of insurance protocols, concentration risk, operation credit market risk evaluation. All right, so insurance, their value is optimized cost, uh, product-based design, uh, portfolio-based product design and unique pricing model to optimize cost cover together with in sustainable in investment returns, achieving optimized cost for both premium and gas fee. 
enriched product line, wallet-based accessibility, no KYC. So basically just plug your wallet, plug and play. Uh, Portfolio-based product design, um, extensive risk, risk and cross-chain protocols coverage. So yeah, multiple chains besides just Ethereum and just Solidity, providing flexible and easy, easy accessible insurance protection and to end users. Diversified mining programs, the insured, insurer, and investors are able to participate in the diversified mining program to earn the insurance token. This is where I want some clarification um, uh, because I only saw one place to stake on their dashboard, but maybe I'm not going in the right place. Uh, except mining rewards, investors will be able to gain sustainable returns from investment products offered by insurance to IO. Okay, so this is basically their, their see, you can be an investor, um, you can be an insurer, and then, yeah, uh, yeah it all balances each other out. Um, okay, so that, uh, let me go down and find, in, integration with Solana. This is what I was really interested in right now here because of, um, I do see Solana um, with a bright future in mind. And I didn't see Solana yet on their dashboard. So uh, I'll be interested to talk about that. Uh, more protections for funds on Solana to attract new users as well as new projects. Easy and direct act access to insurance services for Solana users. More integrations with protocols on Solana and partnerships with more Solana projects um, and, more offer, and offer more user benefits, premium discount, premium rebate, and mining rewards. Uh, Solana is beginning to build quite a few DeFi apps on there. So um, anyway, let's go take a look over here. Uh, I had the white paper up. Yeah, uh, I like white papers. I love me a good white paper. You know, not too many people can say that. <laughs> that just does not sound very, uh, uh, it doesn't mix well with like a colloquial accent. Yeah, you love me a good white paper. Um, so, all right, so. Insurance offers portfolio-based insurance products with optimized pricing models to substantially lower the cost, launches insurance investment functions with SCR mining programs to create sustainable returns for the participants and provide coverage for cross-chain DeFi projects to benefit the whole ecosystem. Uh, I had to Google what SCR mining is and uh, I just I came up with a bunch of tunneling and boring companies. Um, so uh, probably that's not the way to figure out what it is. Um, it is solvency uh, um, something requirement, uh, cr credit requirement? I don't know, but it's about the amount of money that has to be um, available, I believe. All right, so I'm so such an ignoramus when it comes to like this whole insurance industry. Um, I didn't know that you could actually invest in insurance companies to provide capital for them. I, I, I mean, this is like, it's all new to me. It's basically what I'm trying to say. Uh, so DeFi aims to offer financial services by leveraging the decentralized technologies, mainly public blockchain networks, in an open and transparent manner with universal accessibility. It has been at the forefront of innovations in the blockchain and cryptocurrency space since 2019. Okay, so one of the interesting things about this whole... Um, it, oh, hold on, hold on. Before I get to what my point about... I was going to talk about DAOs and governments. Um, before I get to that, I want to take a look at some of these, these hacks. And one of these hacks here is the Acropolis hack. And I had money in Acropolis um, right around this time, and I pulled it out right at the end of October of 2020. And I'm so glad I did, because right after that, um, they had some issue with KuCoin and all that stuff, and apparently it was a flash loan hack. And that was when I was really just starting to seriously fig piddle around with DeFi and that ha hack happened. I just had this bad feeling about it because I was participating in Telegram conversations and things started turning negative. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pull my money out of here. And then like a week later, bam, they got hit with a hack. So really glad I got out of there. Um, but if if this, if this I had insurance at the time, then maybe that would have been covered. Um, I'm, I mean, I kind of, if I were one of those people that were affected in that, I kind of followed the Telegram conversation for a little while longer after that, and it wasn't pretty. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but insurance would have helped that out, you know? Um, and then you see here all these other ones here. Um, so, needless to say, the cyber attacks have been posing significant threats to the whole DeFi ecosystem fundamentally. Uh, besides the technical approaches to resolve this problem, insurance by, na by its nature has been another effective means to manage this risk. Uh, I mean, Clint Eastwood, he had his insurance, his really long, <laughs> whatever type of gun that was. <laughs> Go ahead, make my day. 
Uh, all right, so uh, yeah, I got Smith & Wesson insurance, right? <laughs> all right, so here are some limitations on product accessibility for existing products. Uh, high premium, KYC-based membership, limited cover capacity, which frustrates customers when they need to buy covers for their intending protocols, lack of coverage for new protocols, no cross-chain coverage, lack of protection diversity, um, uh, which is limited to cybersecurity protection only compared to the wide risk coverage uh, coverage of risk types in traditional insurance landscapes. So it's not just for uh, you know, smart contract hacks. It can be for uh, several different types of hacks, maybe Oracle exploits or something else. Uh, all right, so uh, concentration risk if a platform is solely relying on Ethereum. And then claim assessment. How, do this, how does all this stuff get assessed? Who gives the yes and no judgment? Um, I know Nexus only gives a yes and no judgment. It's either all or nothing, 100% or 0%. Um, however, they did clarify in their interview that I listened to that you know a lot of the debate and the, the back and forth and the you know the, the are we going to do this or not, the, the gray area is talked about in the Discord chat rooms. And I do find that to be uh, a, a, a real significant um, uh, something, I guess. I, I don't have the words for it, but when you participate in a DAO, um, all the actual decisions are really made in some of the softer conversations within the discord of the DAO. And then once it actually comes to proposal and voting, Pretty much everybody's kind of made up their mind. <laughs> I mean, that's the way I found, you know, being a part of a couple DAOs myself. So I, I, and then the way that the Nexus Mutual guy explained it, I mean, it was pretty much, that sounds very familiar. And I don't know if that's how this DAO works or not, but I mean, I imagine as DAOs work, that might be, but um, it has to come to a vote for a DAO uh, from through the community, uh, whether something will be covered or not and is reasonable. And, you know, I'm sure, that you know, everybody who participates in a DAO has a good understanding of, of what is reasonable and what is not, you know. Um, and everybody wants to protect the protocol and, uh, you know, protect their investment as well. Uh, but they also want to make sure that they have a sound product because if they don't offer protection and payouts to legitimate requests, then the, the reputation will be tarnished and then the value of their project and of their tokens goes down as well. So their investment goes down if they if they you know try to be selfish about payouts. So you know it's kind of a, it's a synergistic I, to use a corporate word a syner, it's a synergy you know to to make sure everything works. Um, so um, so wh here's how they feel about Nexus as a competitor. While we acknowledge and respect the leading role of Nexus Mutual as the pioneer of DeFi mutual insurance, we would like to build Insurace as a mutual insurance protocol, but with some distinctive value propositions. We do not consider ourselves as the competitor, but more of a healthy and necessary complementary role to the immense and expansive DeFi world. So I think that's a good outlook. That's a good way to look at it. You know, not everything has to be me against him or her, or you know, we're competing. It's a dog eat dog world. No, not everything has to be like that. You know, everything, things and protocols and and cryptocurrencies and blockchains and all that stuff can work together and fulfill niches that the other person can't or the other project can't. Um, so insurance expand plans to expand the product accessibility to a wider audience by removing the KYC process, which I think is great. Anyone with a digital wallet will be able to connect with the platform and fairly use services such as buying cover, staking asset, making claims, and et cetera. This takes away any chance of discrimination um, based on income level or race or, or uh, criminal background or whatever. You know, Anybody can use it as long as they connect their wallet. And uh, yeah, um, which you know, that, that, that I could go off on a long t tangent about decentralized ID and uh, POAPs and NFTs being able to create reputation and stuff like that, but that is for another episode. But I, d I, I talked about that a couple episodes back. I just briefly touched on it, um, yeah, but that's a whole other rabbit hole. Um, Another distinctive feature for our token economy is the SCR mining programs. The participants will be able to earn the insurance token by staking into the liquidity pool using ETH, DAI, USDT, or other eligible tokens. And that was um, right here in the staking part. Uh, where'd you go? Um, all right, so uh, mining. All right, so it would be right in here. Okay, so yeah. So that's what they're talking about there. Um, 
and use the secured free capital for investment, whereas the mining speed will be controlled accordingly. And there is a mechanism down below in the white paper that outlines exactly how that is, and it balances out the pools and adjusts the, it adjusts the reward return based on the need for capital in certain pools. And I'll scroll down there in a second, but it's, it's pretty complex and uses a lot of funny little math figures, but uh, that's okay. Um, it's there and it's transparent and it's open for anybody to see and look at for themselves and to, to do a personal audit of, of it. So I think that's pretty cool. The low investment return has been a major challenge for Nex Nexus Mutual. So um, Nexus Mutual has a low investment return. On insurance, customers will be able to gain returns in many ways, including invest directly in other DeFi protocols per their risk appetite or stake in the mutual pool to get insurance token as rewards. Uh, and then uh, let's see, further improvements, handle claim assessment quantitatively instead of simple accept or reject. Um, so not, it's not zero or 100%. They, uh, they, they, they figure out different ways to, um, to maybe do some kind of in between and cover certain parts and not cover other parts of it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's more qualitative rather than quantitative. Um, well, they said to accept quantitatively instead of simple accept or reject. Uh, okay, maybe I'm wording that wrong. Anyway, uh, see here. All right. So expand coverage to specific risk types such as Oracle malfunction, asset volatility, flight delay, disaster, and et cetera. All right. So uh, these two parts will. Okay. So here's the business model. And here's what I'm talking about. You can be an investor or an insurer uh, or the insuree zero premium insurance as well as considerable investment return forming a sustainable business model so i guess if you're investing and then you're an insurer then you get the insurance at zero premium um, however in this model insurance as a platform will generate revenues from the insurance premium so i guess as the insuree you're paying the premium and that's where some of the the, the revenue comes uh, from for the insurance.io platform um, as well as their investment returns all right, so the synergy between the two arms, investors, insurers, and insured will all benefit from the interactions between the investment and insurance arms at platform level. The insurance arm provides the coverage to the investment arm, okay? And then the free capital in the insurance pool will be used for investment management by the investment arm, and the investment yield will be returned to the insurance side to invent incentivize the insurers and insureds. <laughs> okay, so, but it's kind of a back and forth and they both feed each other in a little feedback loop right here. And I guess that's the synergy is the corporate word for that. <laughs> All right. So um, here's the governance for it. And these are, this is for claims and for uh, policies and procedures. It's all community based. And you know, I've, I'm a part of DAOs. I, I'm kind of getting familiar how they work. And uh, yeah, DAOs are generally pretty open uh, if done right. And so anybody can jump in and, and be a participant in this. Um, so governance to adopt DAO is the primary governance mechanism for product development, claim assessment, community protocols, token distribution, etc. Meanwhile, we'll also convene an advisory committee to handle the exceptions, the contingency plan to safeguard the insurance business. And then uh, there's a big old architecture right there. Uh, I'm not going to go through that because I don't have time to. But um, so unlike the Nexus Mutual platform where membership registration requires KYC process, which adds the complexity of centralized finance regulations, Insurance platform will not ensure such KYC process, thus enable the platform to reach a wider audience. An ERC-20 token, the Insurance Insure token, will be issued as governance and utility token in the Insurance ecosystem. All right, the Insurance platform will cover... It will provide covers on smart contract cyber threats at the start, which is the most demanding in the DeFi space. Um, let's see here. Uh, when customers enter the insurance protocol, they may choose one or more multiple protocols as a portfolio to get a quotation and place the order, which is what you saw when I was going down through all those different protocols that were listed. Uh, so off the shelf protocols, you can do it either by business type or by protocol risk level. Um, and uh, let's see here. Let's go back into this app. Uh, where'd you go? Um, all right, so app and let's see here, dashboard. And let's see here, my uh, buy covers right there. All right, as you can see, total value staked in that right there. All right, so I can sort by chain types and by risk types, smart contract vulnerability. Um, Custodian risk, 
IDO event risk. Uh, so there's several different ways I can slice the pie. Um, so uh, let's see, let's go down here. Um, so here's this solvency capital requirement. So not solvency credit requirement, sorry. Um, and then minimal capital requirement. And it goes through the mechanics of everything that is needed and how the mining works. I'm still not clear about that, but uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not good at that type of stuff. So I have to recognize where, where it's, yeah, maybe you can figure it out. It's in the white paper there, um, but I'm not good at looking at stuff like that. But here's where I was talking about the, about the mechanics um, and, and the pricing model of that. Um, and uh, let's go down here. Uh, here, okay, here's the mechanics of it. And then how the pools balance each other out and how the return is sometimes higher and sometimes lower ba based upon it. This equation would create a delicate balance between the insurance and investment functions when the insurance capital pool faces insufficiency, which will pose higher risks and lift the premium, the mining speed at the insurance side can be increased to attract more capital to the insurance pool. So when the premium gets high, the other side of it increases its reward. Similarly, once the capital pool at the insurance side is sufficient, the mining speed at the investment side can be increased to attract more investment funds. So you know, the, the rewards increase or decrease you know, based upon um, the need for more allocation to one or the other pool. Um, so in, in like in this said, when the risk is high and the premiums are high, um, the mining speed of the insurance side is increased to attract more capital. So this balance is driven by the SCR mining mechanism at the lower level. Um, SCR mining is to dynamically adjust the mining speed among the ca insurance capital pools according to the capital sufficiency status represented by the SCR ratio, incentivizing more capital staking to the less staked pools represented by the SCR ratio, which will help to reduce the premium on those new or high risk protocols as a whole. The mining speed will be back to normal when the SCR ratio is equal to or above platform defined SCR ratio. So it's pretty cool, man, um, the, uh, how all those mechanics work. I like it when I see, you know, when I can kind of understand something on a more mechanical lower level like that. Um, so let's see, the, the claim assessment will rely heavily on a community claim assessors and the advisory board. The assessors will need to meet a minimum require of stake instead of the simple accept reject result of claim result assessment on uh, other platforms. InsureAce will introduce a quantitative method to handle the claim in a more delicate manner. When InsureAce receives a claim application, the advisory board will investigate into the matter and propose a claim amount. For example, 0% represents a reject and 100% represents full compensation. The other ratio between 0 and 100 represents a partial compensa compensation. After the proposal is submitted to the community for DAO-based decision-making, there is a waterfall to run the final outcome. So there's a graph right here, claim request, the advisory board, they make the proposal, they bring it to the community members with stakings in the insurance pool. Is consensus reached? Yes, yes or no, except reject. Yeah, you know, standard flow chart. Um, consensus reach and then if that doesn't have consensus then it goes to the community members with insure tokens and if that's accepted great if not then it goes to the advisory board where they have the final call on the hammer um so yeah and it's all done through the dow which i like because i'm a big dow fan and uh yeah and then down here it goes talks about the cross-chain coverage insurance will first pr firstly provide coverage to those non-ethereum DeFi projects providing coverage for the whole DeFi community Along this, the, the way, we will also explore technical integrations with other public blockchains to grow the, with the whole ecosystem. And then it just talks about some of the utility of the tokens. And then it talks about network security. Um, as an insurance company that sits there and insures hacks and cyber attacks, they better have the best security out there. And it looks like they do. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, let's see here. And then uh, let's see, where let's go back to their introduction. Uh, their team uh, right here, I don't know if you can see that, but they have a pretty well-rounded team as far as uh, technical people, marketing people, and security people. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I, I was looking at their team, and it looks very well-rounded. It's, it's, it's not um, leaning towards one way or the other. So I've seen some projects be just all developers, and you're just like, oh, man, they're like impossible to talk to. You know, and then the other ones that are just all salespeople, <laughs> and you're like, how does this thing work? And they're like, ah, just throwing buzzwords back and forth. So this is well-rounded and it, it looks it looks great. Uh, it has some really good investor support. Um, um, and let's see here. 
uh, some some good partners. And I like this 88 miles per hour. This is a great protocol. Uh, I've talked about it before on this show. And uh, just to me already, seeing 88 miles per hour uh, on that app, it's one of my, one of my favorite DeFi apps. Um, maybe I'm just a sucker for the design of it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's that. Um, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to spend this episode talking about this, um, especially in light of the whole Rug Zombie um, interview last weekend. It would be cool to have these guys and interview them and have them talk about the differences and just the whole uh, DeFi insurance industry as a whole. Um, I, I've i always been not a fan of just insurance industry in general. Um, I see the need. It's a necessary evil in a way, um, but... Uh, um, it, especially when it's mandated by law that you have to have it, but something like this, uh, this is this I, I, I think can be a good thing. So, um, you know, it just depends on your view of insurance. You know, like like I said, even Clint Eastwood has had his Smith and Wesson insurance <laughs> when when he was going into the Wild West. You gotta have something to back you up. So, all right. <laughs> anyway, that being said, that was um, my topic for the day. Um, uh, I, 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 I love this, you know, I love discovering new projects, new topics, new, new subject matter, um, different sectors of the crypto space. Um, there's something for everybody in this space. You know, if you're interested in art and NFTs, there's a space for you. If you're interested in the plumbing and infrastructure, there's a space for you. If you like uh, content streaming platforms and decentralized video, there's a space for you. You know, there's a space for everybody. If you like DeFi protocols, there's a space for you. And now if you like insurance type of stuff and that, there's a space for you, you know? So uh, it's, 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 it's good, it's good, you know? So whatever you're into, whatever floats your boat. I'm a generalist. I just like looking at it all. Look, I look at it all, man, you know? And I look at all chains, all projects, and I see what's out there. You know, like I said, I get the tossed a lot of links my way now uh, every day i get some kind of link from some different project to talk about and uh i, I don't really talk about a whole lot of them i'm just like ah, yeah. but uh, this one was a good one and it was very relevant to to the interview i just had so all right well that being said uh, i will talk to you guys tomorrow <laughs>